Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening wherever you're at in the world. My name is Master Paul. I'm honored to be connecting with you today. I believe it's the 23rd day of March. We're a few days after spring. It is a Wednesday. And today we are focusing on how to develop the power of your own soul. How to connect yourself to your soul so that you can receive the greatest possible soul potential in this life. There are so many possibilities for our soul and our soul's journey in this life. And yet we rarely tap in to that potential soul power. And so today we're going to be talking about that as we move through this amazing, amazing uh, live stream. Now my, my live streams, for those that are listening for the first time or on podcast, are typically one hour. My, uh, my practices for the energy practices are typically about 30 to 45 minutes. <clears throat> but I'm grateful to be connecting with you today and I encourage you to watch the entire time. If you don't have the time, please uh, subscribe, like me, and I will send you a, um, a copy of this most recent uh, podcast or webcast and I can make sure that you'll be very grateful to have that. And so yesterday we focused on a different aspect of the soul. Uh, we were working with how to awaken ourselves to our soul journey more. It was an exceptional value and teachings. We received blessings. I did have one of the students that said, you know, uh, and it was only a three minute blessing at the end. And they said, I had a miracle. I actually, uh, I didn't check with them what that miracle was, but it really doesn't matter for them. It was a miracle. And I give all credit to the divine, to the source. I give credit to my teacher, Master Shah. I would not have the ability to serve in this way or to offer the amazing blessings that are that come through me without uh, without the divine, the source, and my teacher opening my spiritual channels. So I see a lot of new names popping up today, a lot of names I haven't seen in a while, so I'm very excited. <clears throat> For those that are listening on podcast, you can watch this live on uh, my Facebook live stream. Just just uh, friend me, and um, you can watch any of my videos. And Facebook knows if you're not subscribed to me. So at the end of the video, it'll give you a chance to subscribe. And that's how you be made aware of when I go live. But for those that are, again, that are new, it's always 2 p.m. Hawaii time, 5 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. in Australia. It's about midnight in the UK, about 1 a.m. in Europe. Uh, and it's quite early in India, about 5.30 a.m. That's how you can watch me live. So I've got a lot of people tuning in today. It must be a popular subject, how to develop your soul power. So uh, welcome, Michelle. I like your new hair color. Welcome, Joanne. Welcome, Laurie. Welcome, Susan Birchmore. Thank you for your comments uh, yesterday. Welcome, Lisa. And welcome, Jasmine. Welcome, Chris. Welcome, Jenny. Uh, welcome, CJ. Aloha, Ben. Good to see you. <coughs> welcome, Desiree. And welcome, Tammy. Welcome, Lila. Welcome, Rawita. Good to see you, Rawita. New person, I believe. Uh, welcome, Jasmine. And welcome, Ilona. Welcome, Renee. Aloha, Judas. Aloha, Shari. Aloha, uh, Kristen Rojas. Aloha, Anna. And Diane Wooten. Thank you all, right off the bat, for hitting uh, the, that share button, letting other people know about this. And same thing for those listening on podcast. If you enjoy this, please let other people know and all, of course, subscribe. Um, now, one of the things I want to start with, and I wasn't intending on starting with this, but I want to start with it, which is uh, the subject of master. Um, when I started out on my spiritual journey and people would call themselves a master, it actually rubbed me the wrong way. Um, and I've come to realize that it was a response based on my, uh, my lack of growth. And I have no attachment to that, by the way. You can call me Paul. You can call me Master. I don't really care. You can call me Jeff. Uh, a name is just a name. The, the title is really about, um, it's, it's, it's representative of, is your heart in the right place to serve? Um, it's representative of this person has dedicated their life, has done many, many years of education and challenges and purification where they stepped to the place where they have earned, quote, that title. But it is just a title. I, I don't take it uh, for anything other than that. It simply represents that 
uh, I have an opportunity to serve you and, and others a little bit better. So for those that are listening or watching for the first time, um, if this does rub you the wrong way, my encouragement is to look at it similarly that, that I did when it rubbed me the wrong way uh, back when I was in my soul journey, which is that um, those that there are quite a few out there actually that have that name that carry various levels of ego and certainly I do as well but I work on a basis to to minimize it and to eliminate it as much as possible and so um, that is somebody that is on the path so that's what I would say if somebody has that title just recognize that they're on the path if they are truly on the path they have no attachment to that so I wanted to say that um, I don't know why, but that's what my soul said to say, so now I'm done. So let us all connect heart to heart, soul to soul. Aloha, Susan. Aloha, Karen Lockwood. Welcome, Kristen Strachan, Sarah MacArthur. Anyone else I may have missed, uh, please forgive me. And welcome, Norma. So let's place our hands in the soul light, soul service hand position, which is the uh, um, palms touching you together. So just like a prayer position, the left hand drops in front of the heart center. Uh, the right hand remains pointed towards heaven. Now this is called a hand mudra. And the hand mudra allows us to assist to heaven in the most pure levels. So uh, if you're comfortable, please do that. We have what's called the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony. And it is a song that is dedicated to serve all in humanity. It is literally translated in over 50 languages and sung around the world five minutes noon every day. And so Kristen has been very good about posting those kinds of information. So uh, if you'd like to know more about that, please follow up with some of the posts that Kristen puts in there. Let us connect. Dear the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace, Harmony, transmitted to all souls in all universes. We love you, we honor you, respect you. We ask that you please turn on and we invite all souls in all universes to join with us to bring about the greatest light, to bring about the greatest alignment to oneness. We ask that you be present here today to align our hearts and souls and to uh, communicate, uh, borrow my mouth so that I speak the highest and best truths that can serve the most souls. Very, very honored and grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For those that are new, this is a blessing. Close your eyes to receive. Everybody else, let's close your eyes and serve. Lula, Lula, li. Lula, Lula, la, li. Lula, Lula, li, Lula. Lula, li, Lula. Lula, li, Lula. <coughs> Woe wash in her ling. Woe I to run ran lay. Wong li hing rung her musher shung. Shung I ping on her she. Shung I ping on her she. I love my heart and so I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Eloha mai au. Eloha kakoa pao, epihi li mai vuvai kakao, aloha mali elo kahi, aloha mali elo kahi. One more round. Lula, lula li. Lula, lula la li. Lula, lula la li. Lula, lula li. Lula, lula li. Lula. Oh, I wash in her ling. 
Oh, I turn and lay. Wong Li Hing Rong, Her Mu Shi Shang, Shang I Ping, An Xie, Shang I Ping An Xie. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. How, how, how! Thank you, thank you, thank you. We say how, which is a Mandarin Chinese word, it means complete, perfect, great. We say thank you three times. The first thank you is to our beloved Creator. <clears throat> the second thank you is to all the beings of light that we have yet to call forth. So I will do that shortly, and to all, uh, to our own soul. And so we ask all beings of light, including masters, ascended masters, lamas, sifus, gurus, saints, angels, healing angels, and archangels, beloved Mother Earth, and beloved uh, the sun, the moon, the soul of all stars, planets, galaxies, and universes. We involve all light beings and we ask as appropriate that you please join us at this time. We invite our individual heavens teams, guides, angels, and saints to join us at this time. We ask that you come to be in our heart centers. Bless us to open our heart to discover the power of our soul and how better to align to our soul. So I want to acknowledge those who have checked in. Aloha Jasmine. Hi Nina. <coughs> Aloha Karen. And welcome Janine. Welcome also Johannes. Welcome Judas. Welcome Kathy Campbell. Aloha Rosenberg. And uh, I saw your comment, Sarah Michelle. Um, maybe that's what triggered it, but for whatever reason, I needed to share uh, those thoughts about the new master. And Aloha, Sir Master. Aloha, Amy. And we thank you all for being here and letting other people know about this live stream. Today's subject discovering and developing the power of soul. What does that mean to develop the power of our soul or to develop our soul? What it means is that our soul has a huge, huge amount of potential. That potential is already in existence. It is already there. It has been with our soul through all of its experiences. My teacher, Master Shah, who is very connected to the heavenly realms, very connected to the records of Akasha, checked and he asked, Dear Heaven, what is the average number of lifetimes that a human being has? And Heaven responded, Approximately 600 is the average. That's a lot of lifetimes. Now, I'm not saying that's true or false, and I'm not saying that you need to even believe in more than one life. That's completely up to you. But I offer you this as a part and parcel of this information. And so to develop our soul power, first and foremost, is to recognize that we are, first of all, a soul. We are a soul having a physical experience. And as a soul, we have had many, 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 many experiences. As a person, this personality that, that I call Paul, you call Robin, or you call Jane, or Jim, or Bob, as a personality, we can pretty much only remember this experience with few snippets of other things that show up that we see or think that connects us to other times. Our soul, however, has extraordinary knowledge, extraordinary memory, and extraordinary potential. So how do we develop our soul potential? We start by recognizing that our soul is exceedingly wiser than we are. We go through this life with all forms of, of attachments and mindsets and beliefs, uh, self-righteousness, ego, all forms of this. And they, for, for the most part, restrict us from connecting to our soul. They inhibit us from aligning to that which we truly are. And 
the more we try to defend any form of self-righteousness or ego or um, why we do something a certain way, why we don't do things a certain way, um, why I'm right and they're wrong. All of this might feel good in the moment. It feels good because it supports us. It supports all of our, um, I call it the pillars of our life. We have pillars, you know, one of the pillars is our belief system. Another pillar is, is our sexual orientation. Another pillar is, is our um, belief about um, uh, money. Another pillar is our belief about relationships and so forth. And we have these beliefs and they're built upon what we've accepted as truths from our parents, our peers, and society as a whole. Uh, and nothing is wrong with them. Everybody has the exact and perfect set of conditions for their life and their soul journey. Those conditions came to you as a result of, of your entirety of your soul journey. They came to you as a collective and then when you came into this life experience, the, your soul and your heavens team planned out an entire life for you. And so there's nothing wrong or right about it. However, as we move closer to realigning to our soul, to developing our connection with our soul, we must look at what are we doing to cause further connection or what are we doing to separate ourselves from our soul. Since you may choose to accept that our soul has had many, many lifetimes of knowledge and wisdom, stands to reason that we want to do whatever we can to eliminate the blockages between us and that connection. Why do we want to do that? Well, aside from having the same knowledge that our soul has, we would definitely have less suffering. Raise your hand if you would like less suffering in your life. Of course, who would not want less suffering? Who likes to suffer, right? Nobody likes to suffer. So when we take the time to first understand the purpose of our soul and its journey, secondly, to recognize that these pillars that we built up that we call life, that we call our, um, our ego, our self, our personality. These, these dogmas, these mindsets, attitudes, beliefs, these attachments, ego, everything that represents who we are. I am, I am, I am. This is like what I started out with about the, the, the label of being a master. It's just a label. It's not who I am. And you are not who you think you are because you are actually a soul having a physical experience. So to move yourself to there, it starts by recognizing that the breaking down of those things that you think is who you are is where it all begins. Now, some of you have had significant trauma in your life. Some of you have gotten your butt kicked, for lack of a better word. You've just gotten beaten up and down and you can write two novels on it. Um, yeah, everybody's hand went up. Yeah, my life is just one big, one big bag of suffering. Well, guess what? If, if, if all 40, 50 people watching live now agree, the chances that all 7 billion are in the same agreement. So out of 7.7 .7 billion pieces of human beings running around out there, you might only find maybe a thousand that says, no, I am 1 million percent happy with my life. There's no suffering. I'm just peachy keen. Everybody else has suffering because there is not alignment. There is not alignment with the original source and obviously not alignment with soul. And so in order to move from where you're at, wherever that suffering shows up in your life, to developing your soul, you want to start by recognizing these basic truths. Master Shah brings to us some foundational teachings of love and forgiveness. Uh, and you'll hear this again and again and again throughout my live streams. And one of these times it will make sense. One of these times the light bulb will come on. <clears throat> They come on and they're needed. Love and forgiveness are most needed in the areas where we have the most suffering because that most suffering is directly related to our inability to connect to our soul. To develop connection to soul means not being in suffering. Then we can hear clearly. Then we can uh, uh, have a two-way conversation, so to speak. Then when our soul says, uh, don't go here, we hear it. When our soul says, that's a great idea, follow through on that, we'll hear it. The inability to connect to our soul has to do with uh, our mindsets, attitudes, beliefs, attitudes, and all of these things that we've accepted as truth in our life. And when we hold on to those with all of our might, 
they tend to bring us some significant blockages. Now, they're not all wrong. Some of them are life-saving. We want to keep those good ones. But even some of the life-saving ones need to be taken a look at. I'll give you an example. Let's say that you have a fear of men that have short hair, that are big build and, um, and, uh, 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 um, and dark skinned, okay? And that would be rooted in uh, maybe being attacked as a little girl by someone with tall, muscular, dark hair, short hair. This would be um, a, a good thing at that time. It protected you. It was a mindset, a belief, and, it's, and it could have saved your life. Um, but that no longer serves a purpose now. And so, although that's a very crude example, what happens through life is we have traumas, we have experiences that cause us to close our heart. They cause us to fold in on ourselves and be protective in very specific ways. It could be about how we look at a belief system. It could be how we look at a certain uh, 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 sexual orientation. It could be how we look at um, teachers like, oh, there's a master teacher, blah, blah, blah. That's a mindset. It's not serving you now if, one of those, if you're one of those people that have that kind of a thought. Um, there's all of these things out there that we, we know they grab us and we know they grab us because we have a mindset about it. We have a judgment or a criticism about it. What we want to do is look, does that judgment or criticism support me in holding on to this pillar of belief? Is that truly a value or is it more allowing me to be superior to this person for whatever reason? And oftentimes you'll discover that it's a protective mechanism when we have a judgment or criticism that protects us so that we can support our pillar because if our pillar gets torn down, heaven forbid, we can't support the other things we built upon it. So it really requires being conscious. It requires us to not be judgmental, not be um, critical. And this includes of self, guys, okay? We're most critical and judgmental of self. Why are we critical and judgmental of self? Very often it's because nobody else is. We moved out of a house where our parents, our peers, our brothers, our sisters, our religion was critical and judgmental and they're no longer around. So let's do it to ourselves. So that's sometimes what happens. But it's false information. It's stuff that is no longer necessary and it in separates us from our soul. It separates us from developing our soul potential and our soul power because we expend all of our time and energy in this place of falseness. So awareness is key. When you're aware, then you just simply offer love and forgiveness. That's how you melt it. It's not difficult to melt, but if you don't see it, it becomes exceedingly difficult to melt. Suffering in all forms is uh, basically somebody knocking on your door and saying, hey, here's another opportunity to use love and forgiveness to melt this so that you don't have to suffer anymore. Uh, you've heard me say before that when, when we are the victim of anything, it doesn't matter if we're the victim, you know, they did this to me, uh, whatever it is, if there's any form of that belief system around it, and you're the victim, then you're the one that's behind the bars shaking and rattling the cage. That's not assisting you to open your heart so that you can reconnect to your soul. What that's doing is it's keeping you in a place of closed heart and confinement and you're not allowing yourself to return to your highest self. You've heard me speak many times before about uh, karma, uh, spiritual debt and how it returns to us, blah, 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 blah. But if you really take a look at the, the, the simplistic nature of the universe, what you give is what you receive. If you do good things, you receive good things. And yet sometimes we still suffer even though we're good people. So we have to recognize that that's part of the, the soul journey. It's cleaning up some of our stuff. Uh, when we have any form of unpleasantness that comes to us, apply love and forgiveness. Not always easy, but work at it until you can. Whenever you find yourself being critical of self or critical of others, uh, apply love and forgiveness. Ask forgiveness for being critical. Offer uh, love instead of judgment. And then do the same for yourself. Forgive yourself for being critical and judgmental. Love yourself. And then ask yourself, you know, why was I critical? 
Why was I judgmental? What benefit do I get from that? This is how you drill down a little bit. I must be getting some benefit from being judgmental and critical. And if you drill down on it, you're going to find that typically it's something protective, something that supports a belief system that you have that pushes you above the other on some level. And by placing yourself above another on some level, it gives you a form of strength. It's a protective mechanism. Okay, These are simple things that you can do on a day-to-day -day basis. And each time you do something simple like that, what in essence you're doing is you're opening your heart. Your heart and your soul are one. Opening your heart is the key. Almost all of us have variations of a closed heart. And we can say, well, it's because that SOB boyfriend, girlfriend, blah, 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 dumped me. Okay, that could be your excuse. Thereby, you're the victim. Okay, um, is victim helping you? Are you inside the cage rattling the bars or are you outside the cage walking free? So it doesn't serve any purpose. Love and forgiveness. Yeah, but how do I forgive that blah, blah, blah for doing that to me? Well, karma says maybe, maybe it's possible, 50% possible. You were the one being the very unpleasant one to that person in a previous time, doing the exact same thing they did to you. Might be hard to swallow, but it's a 50-50 chance. And if you want to hold on to the I'm right and they're wrong, well, you can. But is that been serving you? Is that bringing you any value? Is it assisting you to have an open heart? Is it helping you to move through life with love? Is it helping you at all? Probably not. So better to go, hmm, if I did harm that soul the way I have been harmed, that must have really sucked for them. So I'm going to really work on this love and forgiveness. I'm going to offer myself love and forgiveness for being in that relationship. I'm going to ask them for love and forgiveness for any time I may have done something like this to them. And I'm going to offer love and forgiveness because even if they didn't do it to me first, I really don't want to be the one that reminds them in the future because then we're just going around the circle like a rat wheel. And so this is kind of a common sense aspect of love and forgiveness. Every day, heaven, your soul, gives you opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to open your heart more and more, to align to your soul more and more. Heaven loves us with the greatest love. And it seems so difficult to imagine that when we're in deep levels of suffering, when we're in, when it doesn't matter what it is, we all have, like I said, two novels worth of suffering that we could, we could, we could spend hours talking about that and telling each other our story. Some of us are so in love with our own story that we can't even think about getting out of it. In order to develop the power of your soul, you must awaken your heart. In order to awaken your heart, you must start taking a look at all those things that you have done in the past and in the moment that are keeping your heart closed. Negative thoughts, negative actions, uh, being the victim, all of these things are keeping your heart closed. Love and forgiveness opens your heart. Now there are, of course, other ways to accomplish opening your heart much faster. You can receive special services from uh, uh, a master teacher like myself. You know, receive a crown chakra blessing or a healing and transmission system that, you know, clears the blockages from your heart center, gives you a light wall protection, and then, you know, life is a whole lot easier very fast. That's, you know, that's available whenever you're ready for it. But in the meantime, you still have to use practical things to, to open our heart, to keep our heart open. And so, for example, you heard love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony is a gift to humanity that carries the frequencies of our beloved divine. It carries the frequencies of the highest divine's love, forgiveness, compassion, and light. And so when we chant it, we're literally opening our heart. When we serve others, all those others that we are serving, when we say, Dear love, peace, and harmony, as I chant you, please serve all souls in all universes. When we chant from our heart unconditionally to serve others, that's literally trillions of souls that are being positively impacted. The nature of the universe is that those souls that do feel it send you, in return, gratitude. That gratitude is love. That love opens your heart. Teachings are very simple. That's why you hear again and again, 
be of service, serve others, chant for others. It's very, very simple. And yet, sometimes we don't do it, maybe if we think about it 10 minutes a day, because we are so mired in our work, our job, our life, our husband, our kids, our, you know, whatever our story is, we're so bogged down in it, we can't even find that 10 minutes a day to offer this form of unconditional service as one way in which we can open our heart. And so today I'll be giving you some wisdom from uh, Master Shah's book, The Power of Soul, on how to develop our soul, how to develop our connection to our soul, and how to realign to our soul potential. And it's just one of many practices. Um, but this particular one has a very deep uh, root to it. And if you were to memorize it and, and chant it, specifically for opening your connection to your soul, it, it, will, it will create some amazing results. Um, uh, but, in order, but in maintaining an open heart, that is something different. So this practice we're going to do, this mantra I'm going to teach you, is about uh, connecting and developing that soul connection. But at the same time, we must, on a daily basis, see where we might be doing thoughts, words, and actions that cause our heart to close or remain closed, okay? So, I'll read to you a little bit from uh, the book. It's called The Power of Soul. I was working with it yesterday as well. And for those of you that do not have it, highly recommend it. It is a, um, uh, it is a foundational book that can serve you your whole life. Uh, truly, the wisdom in here, you could read it again and again and not get enough value out of it. And as with any truly good book, you, you know which ones that you went back to and you read it again and you get a whole new layer. That's one of these kinds of books. So I'm on chapter three and it's called Develop the Power of Soul. I'm going to read directly from this book on page 67. Mind has power to heal. This is Master Shah's wisdom and teachings. Mind has power to heal, to heal, bless, and transform life. Soul has greater power to heal, bless, and transform life. I wrote this book to share with you and teach humanity the power of soul. Every human being has a soul. Every system in the body, organ, cell, cell unit, RNA, and DNA has a soul. Animals have a soul. Oceans have a soul. A tree has a soul. A star has a soul. A galaxy has a soul. Many people still wonder if a stone, a rock, has a soul. The answer is yes, a stone has a soul. A few years ago, I saw a headline in a newspaper, and it said, the headline said, does a business have a soul? And Master Shah says, of course a business has a soul. And there's an ancient spiritual teaching. There's a famous statement, Wan Wu Jie Ju Ling. Wan means thousand, uh, and it represents all or everything. Wu means thing, Jie means all, Yu means has, and Ling means soul. Wan Wu Jie Ju Ling means everything has a soul. This is an ancient teaching. Let me give you an example. If you have an advanced third eye spiritual ability, then you hold a piece of herb, a fresh herb. You could be surprised to see a small golden light being in the herb. The small golden light being is the soul of the herb. People talk about consciousness. Mind has a consciousness. Most people think that to transform consciousness is to transform the consciousness of the mind. It is great to transform the consciousness of the mind, but it is not enough. The power of soul teaches us to transform the consciousness of soul. Master Shah goes on to say, a human being has a soul, heart, mind, and body. A heart and mind exist when a person exists. When a person dies, the heart and the mind of that person disappears. The soul of the human being will then go to the Akashic Records to register. After completing the life in the physical world, the soul will stay in the Akashic Record for 49 days. Then the soul will be assigned to the next life. The soul could stay in heaven for five, 20, 100, 300, or even 500 years before coming back in. You may ask, is it better to stay in heaven for a shorter time or a longer time? The answer is, the longer to stay in heaven, the better. <laughs> Obviously, right? 
A soul has experienced one life after another. A soul lives life in the physical world within a physical body. The same soul has experiences life in the spiritual realm. The same soul experiences life in the spiritual realm when you're not here uh, in a formless condition. Whether it is within a body or not, a soul is constantly learning, experiencing life, and increasing wisdom and knowledge, and gaining more abilities to serve. Each soul carries its own frequency. Each soul has its own consciousness. In chapter 1, I explain the characteristics of the soul. Each soul has its own desires, likes and dislikes. Each soul has its own abilities to serve. This is easy to understand. Think about humans. Human beings have different jobs because every human being has different abilities. The soul is the same. Some souls have great abilities in certain fields. Other souls have more abilities in other fields. Souls are just like human beings. They have different areas of expertise in their soul journey. Just as there are human beings in various fields, there are soul experts in various fields. Just as the humans can develop his or her abilities, a soul can also develop its own abilities. The human being's life is short, but a soul's life is eternal. Therefore, I am here to help you to develop your soul potential of the soul, which is the vital teachings of this book. Is that powerful? Now here is an example of the power of soul. This book was written in one week, seven days. It has 290 pages and it was written in seven days. With that kind of power, how is that humanly possible? If you ask any author, if you ask anybody that knows anything about books and bookmaking, they will tell you it's basically not possible. So how did that happen? Master Shah did not use his mind to write this. He used his soul potential. He connected with his soul that has quite a few more lifetimes than our souls. And that soul potential, which in his case originated at four years old uh, and has been expanded ever since, he has connected as fully as possible to all of his life experiences and all of that wisdom. And so when he writes a book, he simply asks, heaven and his soul to give him the message and his, he just speaks one of his uh, one of his top teachers types it out he doesn't even know the words very often because his mandarin chinese is his native language sometimes he reads his own books and he says to his to, to his other teacher he says what does that word mean he doesn't even know when he reads his own book that's the kind of of amazing power and wisdom that heaven has to bring to humanity Master Shah simply is one of the souls that heaven brings this wisdom to us. If it resonates with you, highly recommend you learn more. Um, I am just a, a master teacher who has been studying this for nine years and has gotten to the point where I can serve you by sharing this wisdom. But he teaches, take no credit, always give credit to heaven, and always share the wisdom freely. Give as much as you can away uh, wisdom because you're awakening other souls on their journey. So now he suggests a practice. So it's going to take a minute or two to explain the practice and then we're going to do it. <clears throat> and so this specifically is for cracking open our cocoon. Literally, we have a cocoon around us. This cocoon is representative of all of our spiritual lifetimes. Um, and we come in and we have this cloud of good and not so pleasant stuff all around us. Um, and it impacts our thoughts, our words, our actions. It impacts what we do, what we say, what we think. It impacts everything about us. And this cocoon kind of separates us, if you will, from our, the purity of our soul, from its messages, from its pure open heart. And obviously that separation is separating us from the divine. So this practice is a very special sacred code, a sacred mantra. Now, for those that are not familiar with sacred codes, uh, like when I first heard this, my, my, my mind was like, whoa, 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 whoa. What, you mean you're going to have me chant a number? 
and you're going to tell me it opens my, my connection to my soul? What do you think? I'm a nut? So I had to go through my processes of working with a sacred mantra number code. What I've come to understand is anything that is truly um, um, from heaven is not something necessarily that we immediately understand. It's something that has to be experienced and then we go, ah, oh, okay, I get it. So this number code uh, is 33968153396815. -3 it's not a phone number. And the story goes, Master Shah, who uh, was accepted as a disciple of probably the most renowned healer in all of China, his name was Master Guo, he would have literally a couple hundred, uh, uh, the incurables would come to his, his compound uh, a couple hundred a day, and, and, and they would several weeks or months later leave um, cured basically. And, um, and so this man, Master Guo, was very connected to Source, and he accepted Master Sha as his very first disciple. And so when he accepted him, in his acceptance letter, he said, love your country, love your mother, and if you want to connect with me, 3396815. And so Master Sha is explaining the story, he said, I thought this was the phone number. He's like, you know, I, didn't, I guess that's how I connect to Master Guo. And so he came to learn that that wasn't a phone number. The sacred code was received one night, Master Guo, who, who's been connecting with the divine since a young child, uh, he, he, he explains that his big toe was shaken as it usually is, and he's woken up and he was given this code. He then woke up his daughter, who was also equally connected, and he said, go into a deep meditation and receive a code. Let me know what number you get. She came back with the exact same number, so that was a confirmation that it was a true heaven message. He didn't tell her. She just came back with the exact same message. So this number code, what it does is it vibrates the body. It cracks open the cocoon of our blockages and allows the soul to release. Okay. The Mandarin version of it is San San Zhou Lu Bai Yao Wu. So if you ask somebody what is one through ten in the Mandarin Chinese language, it's a uh, um, gosh, I couldn't tell you because I didn't memorize it in 1 through 10, but it includes San San, which is the number uh, uh, 3, uh, Zhou, which is the number 9, San San Zhou Lu, San San Zhou Lu, 3396815. And so this is actually just Mandarin Chinese numbers. But what they do is they carry a vibrational frequency. You know, if you're watching this, you know that sound carries healing vibration. Very common sense. We've seen it. If you've ever seen any of the YouTubes where they put a sand on a drum and they, they, they run music through a speaker underneath the drum, the sand literally changes into geometric shapes. It's documented that sound creates geometric structures. So sound and geometric structures represent a vibrational field. And so vibrational fields can heal or they can hurt us. Cell phone signals hurt us. Love is a vibrational field that heals us. Therefore, sound can bring self-healing. So San San Jolyu Bayawu is a sound power. So what it does is it literally cracks open the, the, the body, energetically speaking. So san, san, repeat, san, san. Place your hands on your lungs. San, 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 san. This is the sound power for the lungs. San, 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 san. Jo, jo is the number nine. This is the lower abdomen. Jo, 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 jo. So as your, as your palms over your lower abdomen, when you say Joe, you can feel the vibration there. Joe, 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 Joe. So the next number, San San Jo Lu, three, three, nine, six. Six, uh, Lu, Lu, Lu. This is the rib cages. So put one, one hand on either side of the rib cage. Lu, 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 Lu. San San Jo Lu, San San Jo Lu. So slowly, San San, lower abdomen, Jo ribs, Lu. Again, San San Jo Lu. So touch your lungs, San San. Touch your lower abdomen, Jo. Touch your ribs, Lu. Again, San San Jo Lu, San San.
Jolu. San, san, Jolu. Now you won't be doing that when we chant this. You won't be moving your hands. But what's happening is these areas of your body are literally receiving vibrational frequency that is causing blockages to be released. So san san jo lu ba 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 is the next one. Three three nine six eight eight is your belly button. Ba so put your hand in your belly button. That's the third chakra. Ba 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 san san jo lu 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 ba. Okay. The lungs, lungs, lower abdomen, ribs, belly button. And so, san san jo lu ba ya wu. San san jo lu ba ya wu. Three, three, nine, six, eight, one, five. San san jo lu ba is number eight. San san jo lu ba yao, yao, yi and yao, it's kind of intermixed but Yao means the head area one so the next energy shoots up here so imagine lightning bolts starting in your chest shooting down to your lower abdomen shooting out to your rib cage on both sides shooting back to the center of your body shooting up to the top of your head san san jo lu ba san san jo lu ba and then we add Yao and wu okay so Yao we know is the top of the head that's number one Wu three three nine six eight one five five is Wu. This is your stomach area. Okay, Wu Wu Wu. So your stomach is on the left side of your body, uh, about the near the bottom of your rib cage. So let us touch our 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 uh, chest area. San San Jo lower abdomen Jo 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 the rib cage Ba San San Jo excuse me Lu 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 San San Jo Lu 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 into the middle. And, and our belly button, san san jo lu ba, uh, san san jo lu ba, ba, yao, up here, yao, wu, san san jo lu ba, yao, wu, again, san san jo, rib cage, lu, center of the body, uh, ba, head, yao, wu, Ooh, down to the stomach. So again, you don't have to move your hands. I want you to know though what's vibrating. So let's repeat the Mandarin Chinese mantra slowly. San San Jo Lu Ba Yao Wu. 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 So Master Guo received this mantra and he received the message, teach your students to chant this, they will self-heal faster. So he started teaching his students how to chant this. He would teach them the body power, which uh, could be anyone actually, but for us, for our practice, we're gonna place one hand on our heart center and one hand on our lower abdomen. So this will be our body power. And he would have them close their eyes and chant San San Jo Lu Ba Wu. And he would have them do them for half hour, hour at a time. And what he discovered was that the recovery process of the, those uh, people that came with incurable conditions was enhanced up to 50% by adding this practice. Because what was happening is as the soul was was coming through as the blockages were being cleared and the cocoon was opening up the heavenly light and frequencies that comes through heaven to the soul was now able to enter into the body with less blockages this is what he was able to see with his third eye and he was able to validate over time as he could see that there was a much faster return to health by the incorporation of this sacred and secret code it's a code that is truly sacred and secret. And to have had this put into a book that we can use it to awaken to our soul is very, very sacred. Now there will be some that, that watch this that and immediately turn it off because it literally flies against all of their belief systems. What can I do? I'm not saying believe it, 
my point is, uh, if they turn it off at that moment, what they're saying is, my pillar is so strong that if I accept any of this as possible, then all the other things I've ever believed must have some uh, shakiness in it. And that's, you know, that's not um, allowing yourself to realize that the divine works in all souls with the greatest of love. The divine doesn't say this is the only one that is right and everyone else is wrong. That's like saying, I love my right arm, but I hate my left arm. That's like the divine saying, I love that soul, but I don't like that soul. Every soul is loved equally, all the way down to the guy named Hitler. The divine loves us all equally. So this wisdom, whether it resonates with you or not, is designed to serve us on our soul journey when we are ready to open our hearts to it. If you're not ready, that's okay. No one is asking you to accept it, adopt it, or even use it. It's simply wisdom that is here to serve you if it works for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to chant this using the four powers to open our hearts and souls uh, and connect to our, uh, our, our soul more. Now, if you choose to continue to chant this, which I truly highly recommend, you could just jump around and whatever you're doing, san san jolu bayawu. What you'll discover, especially if you ask this mantra to bring self-healing to your area of choice, you could discover significant benefits. Um, it is also something that you can use as a healing tool to assist others. You always say as appropriate. Always, always, always say as appropriate. But if you had a child that had some suffering, they're the soul of San San Joli Bayawu Mantra. As I chant you, could you please offer your service to assist my child as appropriate? It's a very powerful tool, okay? So close your eyes, place one hand on your heart center, one hand on your lower abdomen. And let us connect this soul has a uh, mantra has a soul, so we are going to connect to that mantra and ask for its service. Dear the soul, repeat after me if you are comfortable. Dear the soul of the mantra, San San Jo Lu Ba Ya Wu, 33968158. I appreciate your service to help me to open and develop my soul power. I'm very grateful for you releasing blockages in my chest area, in my lower abdomen, in my rib area, in my stomach, in my head. I'm very grateful for your service. As I chant your mantra, could you please bless my request of, make your request, whatever it is. <laughs> Thank you. And so with your eyes closed, uh, just visualize light coursing through your body. Uh, if that's difficult, just focus in your heart center. Okay? Let us begin. San San Jo Lu Ba Yao Wu 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 A little bit faster San San Jo Lu Ba Yao Wu 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 Slowly San San Jo Lu Ba Yao Wu 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 
三三，走路八幺五，三三，走路八幺五，三三，走路八幺五，三三，走路八幺五，三三，走路八幺五。三三九六八幺五，三三九六八幺五，三三九六八幺五。Little faster. 三三九六八幺五，三三九六八幺五，三三九六八幺五，三三九六八幺五，三三九六八幺五。Now silent. I will chant very low volume. I want you to chant silently, and I want you to visualize light, just like a massive thousand-watt searchlight inside of your body, becoming brighter and brighter, blasting open your cocoon. San san jo lu ba ya wu. 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 Your heart center is brighter than bright. San san jo lu ba ya wu. 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 I'm gonna go faster. You just silently stay with it. San san jo lu ba ya wu, san jo 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 ba ya wu, san san jo lu ba ya wu, san san jo lu ba ya wu. Slowly see the light. San san jo lu ba ya wu, feel the light. San san jo lu ba ya wu, san san jo lu ba ya wu. San san jo lu ba ya wu. See the light. Literally, the entire cocoon around your body is completely immersed in the light. You can no longer see anything but the light, and it is the brightest in the center of your heart. San san jo lu ba ya wu. 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 <coughs> Now chant with me. San san jo lu ba ya wu. Tap your chest. San san jo lu ba ya wu. 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 Tap your chest gently. San san jo lu ba ya wu. 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 San, san, jo, lu, ba, yao, wu. San, san, jo, lu, ba, yao, wu. San, san, jo, lu, ba, yao, wu. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I personally offer my gratitude to the divine, the Tao, the Source, to Master Guo for being the recipient of this sacred code, and to Master Sha for bringing into the Power of Soul book that we can have this uh, very high-level wisdom that can serve us in our soul journey. <clears throat> so please share. Some people came in late. I'm sure that their eyebrows are tweaked and. Wonderment of what just happened and what was being chanted. So I encourage you, if there's interest, to please、um, watch the entire live stream as there's great wisdom leading up to this mantra. So please share your experiences,、uh, both in the understanding of the power and significance of this wisdom and teaching, and of this mantra. Any experiences you had while chanting, including、uh, sensations, emotions. It's possible that emotions could have occurred. Uh, possibly、um, the release of some blockages in a certain area of your body, vibration, <coughs> heat. There's a variety of ways that people feel it when these things open up. There is, by the way, a utilization of this practice 
that is uh, far more connected to the soul. This is step A. The next level will probably be tomorrow. Okay, so Susan says, I felt like I had two hot hands on my two shoulders. And Michelle says, thank you, my five-year-old and I did this together. Brilliant. Uh, Michelle, if you do this daily with your children, it will increase their intelligence. It will boost and clear blockages in the heart center so it'll keep their heart open when other kids aren't so nice. And it's just huge, I can tell you that. <clears throat> so, uh, Lena Barnes, oh my God, I felt the heat in my heart. Amazing, wonderful sharing. Binu, I felt the heat and I also feel powerful and safe. Excellent. Uh, Kristen Stratton, uh, I was very, very tired when we started and I feel better. I was holding my dog and chanting and the dog liked it. Great. And then Jeanette says, a slight pain in the head but saw some golden light and and did feel heat in her body. Okay. And so you might want to, Janet, um, continue. Um, hmm. Yeah, don't continue chanting yet. Just let it dissipate. You've got some blockages that need to be worked through up there. Um, and you can, if you want to continue chant, you can, but don't stop until it releases is, is, is probably the best way to put it or just stop now. Um, and Susan says, what a powerful lesson. I, for one, can testify that this works. I saw nothing but light with stairs going to heaven. Yeah, it's a sacred code. Very special. Elizabeth says, wow, that was wonderful. I felt so hot like I was getting so much energy light inside. Wow, wow, wow. I feel you so much better. Great. Kate Nicole says, thank you. That was awesomely amazing. And thank you, Kate. You shared that you got a miracle yesterday. So thanks for sharing that. I don't know what it was, but happy for you. Uh, and Janet says the tapping was helpful. Janine says, I was very blessed to listen to you. Thank you, Master Paul. Very welcome. So pure and amazing. I feel better. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Barca says she missed a lot. Yes, please watch again. Heat in the hands. Also happy and crying all in one. Great. Thank you for sharing. And Crystal said she felt incredibly tired before this practice and now she feels energized. Her heart feels more open. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Master Shah. <clears throat> and Kate says she felt un, uh, lost, lost her breath. Actually, that's not uncommon. And I'll share with you the next part of this practice tomorrow. And you'll, you'll see that that's actually a common side effect. Um, Lena says, ready to face life. And <laughs> Johanna says, tickling sensation in his body. Very nice session. C Love says, thank you, thank you, thank you. Deep understanding and feeling of the vibration and beauty. Extraordinary. Okay, wonderful sharing. I'm so happy to read all these sharings. Sadness is turned into happiness for Leela. So this is not a one-time practice, guys. One of the things about Master Shah, she's such a prolific teacher and such a connection to Source that literally 21 books. Now, he didn't write any of them. He's just a conduit that this wisdom comes through and it has impacted literally millions and millions of people's lives. Uh, uh, there are so, so many souls that have been positively impacted and it's just the beginning. They will start to understand who the servant is as time goes by. And it's mantras like this that will help uh, humanity to awaken to their soul and its journey. There is so much power that can come through us to serve when we awaken to our soul and move away from those negative thoughts, negative words, negative actions, all of the, the criticism and judgments towards self and others. So referring to the beginning of this teaching, to open our heart is the key to aligning to our soul. Do what you can on a day-to-day -day basis by catching those blockages and bringing love and forgiveness to dissolve them. Sing love, peace, and harmony to serve as many souls as possible that will maintain the opening of your heart. If you do this mantra, even 10 minutes every day, uh, it would be an excellent coffee for you in the morning. Wake up, dear the soul of San San Jolu Bayawu Mantra. Please connect me to my soul so that I can serve my journey and get the greatest value out of today. And if you chant even just 10 minutes, more is better you will notice significant energy and movement. The clouds will clear in your head. You'll have a smile on your face and you'll be able to enter the day with much more light. 
and people will say things to you. You'll be in the middle of your day and people will say, did you change your shirt? Did you get a new hairdo? You will have changed nothing, but you'll be so much more bright as a result of this connection to your soul practice. So tomorrow during my live stream, you can look forward to the second part of this, which is opening your soul language and possibly your soul song. It is advanced and it is a great opportunity to awaken to your soul journey's highest potential. So I encourage you to tune in tomorrow. I'll be here same time, same place. If anybody has a form of physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual suffering and you need assistance, I am here to serve you. I have special services that can assist in removing those blockages dramatically faster. If you've tried everything else and nothing's worked, check with me. You can reach me through Facebook live stream, uh, through the messenger. You can go through my website or I list my phone number on my email, asoulhealer at yahoo.com. I'm here to serve you. Thank you for sharing. If you're new and you'd want to be made available of these live streams, hit the subscribe at the end of this and follow me and I will serve your soul journey. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all the beings of light who came. Gong song, gong song, gong song. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Bye-bye.